Is this your first time here? No, I've been here multiple times. I was a visiting professor here uh, at least twice in the past, so the Australian doctors know me well. So that was before you were a controversial figure? Well, I tell you, there's no controversy when it comes to medical truth. And there hasn't been a single doctor in Australia who's challenged anything that I've said. I'm you Mini for Rebel News in Melbourne, Australia, where thousands have gathered here today for the COVID-19 vaccination conference. I'm here coordinating the event today. I'm here doing the groundwork, uh, getting my hands dirty, something that most senators probably wouldn't do, but I'm very passionate, I'm keen, I'm dedicated, and this is a great opportunity for people to hear from a true professional, Dr. Peter McCulloch, the world's greatest cardiologist, in my humble opinion. Uh, this is gonna be a great show, and uh, hopefully people get, a, get some good value out of his presentation today. So what's this event about? Why, okay. why is UAP running it? This is a UAP event. Why are they running such an yeah. event in the Melbourne Convention Centre? So this is not solely a United Australia Party members or supporters event. This event has gone out to the wider community. We've got people here from all walks of life. We've got doctors who want to hear the truth. We've got people who are just curious. We've got people who are vaccine injured. We've got people here who have friends who have been vaccine injured. But most importantly, we have people here that just want to hear something that they haven't heard for the last two or three three years, and I'm going to keep harping on about it, Avi. It's the truth. How you going, sir? Nice to meet you. Can I interview you? Uh, you <laughs> awesome. How are you doing? How's, how's Australia treating you? Oh, it's great. Great place. Yeah? Great place. What about the Aussies? They all right? I, what? I love them. You know, America, our hearts are broken for what we saw on the TV reels in Australia. It's terrific. It was great to see you dog veterinarian Albert Bourla on the streets of Davos. It looked like that guy couldn't tackle a tough question if you paid him a billion dollars, huh? It's true. It, it, it certainly felt like that. How's the reception been? Australians are hungry for scientific truth. They've been stonewalled by the government agencies, the hospitals, even their doctors. Uh, doctors have come out, and the level of fear that I've seen among doctors here is unprecedented. And you know what? There's strength in numbers. Every single doctor tells me that they feel strengthened by understanding that uh, uh, we are bringing scientific truth to the, uh, to the country and we're answering questions. This is very important. The ability to have free scientific interchange is vital. We tried to advertise McCullough's visit here in the paper, in the Age in the Sydney Morning Herald, and they refused to accept our money to advertise this event. This is how strong the censorship has been. Even this event today, there were so many people that did everything they could to try and stop it. We had the sabotaging of the tickets by that US company, Evanbright, so who you'll never use again, that event bright. Now I'll never buy a ticket from them ever again. I'll never use them again. We had people writing to the minister trying to get uh, their visas blocked. Even McCullough, when he told me when he arrived at Sydney Airport, he was flagged and taken away for separate questioning because someone had written in and said, oh, he's, he shouldn't be in the country. This is the censorship that we've got to get back in. If their ideas are wrong, debate them. This is what never happened in this country, and that's why we are seeing such the disastrous consequence of COVID, of what's happened both with the vaccination program, the number of people injured, the number of people killed, and the huge economic damage that has been done to this country. 16%, um, 17% excess unexplained deaths here in Australia. What's your response to that? Anytime there is a pandemic, and this is a general epidemiologic principle, and I'm trained in this, there is what's called a culling effect, meaning that some people actually did die of the virus uh, who uh, were very ill, advanced age. So there's been a culling of mortality. Every time th that there's ever been a pandemic, mortality rate is decreased afterwards, decreased, never going up at the end of a pandemic or the closure of the crisis. So I'm deeply concerned that the other exposure besides the virus in the community has been mass vaccination. So you, you think that it may be, it, it, it's something to do with the vaccine? It's clearly something that needs to be investigated. So, in, if so for instance, most countries have vaccine administration records. Most countries have death records. Those administrative data sets need to be merged and we need complete transparent analysis. You're a cardiologist, I believe, yeah? So to me, uh, tomorrow is my third year anniversary since I had a cardiac arrest. I died, my wife, God bless her, saved me, but that was three years ago, and that was just as 
COVID had kicked in. Mm -hmm. So this idea of sudden death from cardiac arrest has always, it's, 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 I think it's the number one killer in Australia before the pandemic, number one killer for fit, healthy men under 40. That's what I learned the hard way. Um, to people that, that, that think that every death is associated, what would you say to them? When young people have a cardiac arrest, the cause, this is prior to COVID, is known. So when you underwent your evaluation, it wasn't a mystery. It turned out to be hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or a thickness of the heart or abnormal coronary arteries or an abnormal electrical pattern that we see on EKG and electrophysiologic testing, and it's known. What is extremely disturbing now in the era of vaccination is that there are sudden deaths with no explanation. No, there's no doctor that comes out and says, oh, don't worry, we, we've got it figured out. It's hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, for instance, or long QT syndrome or Brugada syndrome. These are well understood syndromes. And sure, they occur and they're at a background rate, but we should never accept someone who's taken the vaccine, died, and then have the death be declared unknown. Well, they tell that's us in Australia that it's long COVID. You don't buy that? In uh, Australia right now, there are two exposures. There's both the virus and the vaccine. Now, in Australia, for most people, the vaccine was first. They took the vaccine, and because it doesn't work, then they get COVID on top of it, so they've had multiple exposures of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. We know that the vaccine exposes the body to way more spike protein than COVID illness. So we wouldn't ascribe it to the lower exposure, long COVID. It would be ascribed to the vaccine. That's a systemic installation via injection. So no, we wouldn't attribute it to the respiratory illness. On top of that, we have a period of time, for instance, in America, no vaccine. All we have is COVID. So we can actually study that period of time. And there are cardiovascular effects of COVID, but they are small. And it, we knew that because it was studied before the vaccine. So for instance, myocarditis was intensively studied before the vaccine. The NCAA Big Ten did this, US military. They looked so hard for myocarditis. They found a handful of cases, but it was so de minimis without risk of hospitalization death, they gave up on the myocarditis programs. That's before the vaccine. Now the FDA in the United States in June of 2021 comes out and says the vaccines cause myocarditis. They cause myocarditis. This is clear. I'm a cardiologist. We cannot let anyone with myocarditis exercise because the exercise will trigger a cardiac arrest. And these notable circumstances we're seeing are occurring during exercise and another period of time that's at risk of sleep, actually, because there's a rise in adrenaline towards the late hours of sleep. Has it been a success? Massive success. Why? Massive success. Dr. Peter McCulloch gets mobbed wherever, wherever he goes. The guy is like a rock star. Uh, people are clamouring to get a photo with him. That can't be good for his heart. <laughs> well, it probably isn't, but he's having a great time. He's actually very surprised at how, how uh, receptive people have been to him. And, you know, uh, we need more people like him, people that are willing to put their careers and their lives on the line, get out there just because they want people to hear the truth. Last but not least, um, you're in Melbourne, I'm sure, uh, during the pandemic over the last few years you saw a lot of what happened here what would your message be to the government and Daniel Andrews specifically the premier here uh, known as dictator Dan is mm. locally what would your message be to him and the way he handled COVID here protests indicate government mismanagement there wouldn't have been a protest if things were managed correctly listen I'm from Texas we have way bigger cities and way bigger population than Melbourne we didn't have protests because we managed the pandemic correctly. And everyone has guns. Listen, the guns never came out because we had reasonable doctors who took leadership positions. Fortunately, we had enough government officials who listened. We never closed down the state. We did reasonable things. We never overflowed our hospitals. And people largely had free choice on whether or not they took a vaccine. So to summarise that, in Australian, we need to get rid of Daniel Andrews and bring back guns. Appreciate your time, sir. All right, thank you. <laughs> if you enjoyed this report, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, share it far and wide because the mainstream media, they will not be covering this event. They don't want to platform the truth. So it's up to you guys. And then head over to followavi.com just in case they ban us from the platform you're watching this on right now. That way you can sign up to the mailing list and support our work. Follow me across socials, followavi.com, and you'll never miss a thing.